Hey MCE crew, I'm taping this on Wednesday morning. This video will be out on Wednesday afternoon, waiting for the uh, CPI, Consumer Price Index numbers, the inflation number. A lot of uh, speculation is that uh, it has peaked, that it won't go up in this report that we're going to get today. By the time you watch this video, you will know. Uh, hey, I hope that's correct. Uh, but we've seen the experts be wrong consistently. So let's just keep our fingers crossed um, that inflation, it is going to, I've, I've been saying this, it is going to moderate at some point. Hopefully that point is with today's number. We'll show that that happened. Um, will prices go down from here? I don't think so. And here's why I suspect, now we'll see if I'm right or not. Here's why I suspect that inflation, the number may be up because of the diesel fuel prices. And remember, we covered the fact that uh, container ships, trains, and of course, trucks, semi-trucks, all use diesel. Uh, most of the equipment on uh, a farm is diesel powered, a lot of it. Uh, and so, if all of those things are subject to a rising diesel price, then those prices are going to be passed on. So we'll see if I'm right about that. And you know what? Hopefully I'm not. Hopefully we can start to get some relief here because I I just, you know, the family of four going to the supermarket, we're a family of two, okay, and $70 is the new $40. So I can only imagine what, and, and look, my wife and I, we don't eat three meals a day, okay? Um, but you've got kids. My nephew stayed with me uh, years ago, and um, you know, I'm like, wow. So this kid does actually need three meals a day. Uh, it wasn't an option, you know, to actually feed uh, this kid. Three meals a day plus, you know, they've got to have, they're growing. they got to have snacks and whatnot. It gets expensive. So hopefully I'm wrong. We'll see. Now, let's get into the heart of the matter. Okay. I had a an associate come to me and they were asking me for months on end. They said, look, I got this information from the federal government. They're saying that I could be eligible for more EIDL money. Should I do it? I said, well, you should apply and, you know, give them the information they need and let them make a determination as to whether or not you should uh, you can get more money. Hell, they sent you the letter. Why wouldn't you? Uh, well, because I just don't want to add to the burden, and I'm not sure that, um, you know, I, I uh, uh, qualify. Let them figure it out. You send them what they ask for, and you let... Uh, this conversation, like, went on for months, okay? And, well, I, at, at one point, they actually said, I don't need the money. Huh? You don't need the money. And this person runs a business, okay? You always need money. I don't care if you're running a business or not. Look, Elon Musk is the richest man in the world. He still gets up every morning and goes to work building cars and rocket ships and flamethrowers and solar panels. And just bought Twitter, okay? So I don't want to hear that. I don't need the money. So then the conversation evolved into kind of, a, you know, what should we as Americans do to help out with the rising uh, federal deficit. Got into a conversation about the student loan crisis. Now look, I took student loans out when I was in college, a few, okay? And I had to pay them back. And I didn't, I, okay, I took the money. I, didn't, I paid it back. That, that was the agreement, okay? Um, I don't believe that people should have their student loans paid off by the government, by the people, because the government doesn't have any money. But if these clowns in Congress and in the White House decide that that's what's going to happen, then even if you have student loans and you don't believe the government should pay them off, what are you going to do? Okay, you'd be a fool to refuse the money or somehow send your portion back to the U.S. Treasury. They will accept it. Okay, uh, but you'd be a fool to do it. Look, the United States of America has a debt of over 30 
trillion dollars and that is not counting the unfunded liabilities of social security medicare and medicaid and if you add that then we're over 200 trillion dollars listen it's the titanic folks and i'm not suggesting that you do anything unethical immoral or illegal but if the government is calling you and saying hey you might be eligible for some money here send us this information and we'll make a determination you'd be a fool not to now, on the flip side, the government, and I pointed this out to this individual, they just, uh, the House just passed a bill for $40 billion in new aid for Ukraine. $40 billion. Now, remember, they've given Ukraine billions just a few months ago, all right? And I can assure you that there will be another, then again, there may not be, because we're in an election year. Um, and look, this is bipartisan, okay? Uh, some Republicans voted for this bill, all right? The only people to vote against it were Republican, but some Republicans did vote in favor of passing this $40 billion, and I believe this is actually more than Biden asked for, okay? Uh, listen to this. On Tuesday night, the House passed a nearly $40 billion bill for new Ukraine aid as Washington continues to escalate its role in supporting Kiev in its war against Moscow. The measure passed in a vote of 368 to 57, only Republicans voting against the bill. The legislation now moves to the Senate, which could hold a vote this week. Senate's going to pass this. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has said the Senate will move swiftly, although some Republicans in the chamber have complained that the massive aid package is not large enough. So the Republicans in the Senate are saying 40 billion, that's it. So they want even more. And if the Republicans want more, I'm sure the Democrats will oblige them. So what I'm saying, uh, let, let me just read this. President Biden asked Congress for 33 billion for new Ukraine aid, but congressional Democrats ramped it up to 39.8. The package includes $11 billion in presidential drawdown authority, which allows President Biden to send Ukraine military equipment from U.S. stockpiles. The aid also includes <clears throat> $6 billion in Ukraine security assistance initiative funding, which enables the U.S. government to buy weapons from arms makers and send them to the Ukraine. Uh, so we've got $40 billion, and they've said $11 billion. Plus six is 17 billion. We're still a long way away from, um, you know, equaling that whole 40 billion. Let's see if we can find some more. The Pentagon will receive 8.7 billion to replenish weapon stockpiles that have been sent to Ukraine. So, look, let's just get real with it. If you are an investor in one of these defense contractors like Raytheon, General Dynamics, um, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, you're going to make out like a bandit because they make weapons and they just say, okay, well, we're sending weapons that you already paid for. We're sending those, some of those weapons to Ukraine. And then we've got $8.7 billion allocated to replenish the weapons that we sent over there. So we got to build new weapons. So if you're an investor in one of these defense contractors, Now's the time. I mean, they're going to basically the policymakers have kind of put us into a new Cold War stance. And during the Cold War, that was just, you know, it was a boon for weapons manufacturers. And I'm not making a moral statement on that. OK, um, you could honestly argue that, hey, I'm in it for the money and these guys are going to do what the hell they're going to do, regardless of what I think. And that is certainly true. So. Um, right now, the United States is facing all kinds of shortages in fuel. Um, I was talking to a friend uh, just yesterday about a housing shortage in Michigan. Um, we've got now a baby food shortage. Um, you know, we're looking at uh, food shortages. The president talked about that a while back. And yet we are sending $40 billion to Ukraine. So don't come at me talking about all this hemming and hawing and, you know, uh, maybe I should. If the government says to you, hey, you might 
we might want to give you some money. We might want to loan you some money at an incredibly low interest rate for 30 years. Take it, okay? Take it because they are going to be sending it. How can you sit on your moral precipice and then also see your government sending $40 billion to Ukraine? And I'm not making a judgment one way or the other. If you support what's going on with Ukraine, fine. If you, you know, want to be agnostic about it or you support the, the other stance, I'm not even getting into that. I'm talking about the reality that we, the American taxpayer, have forked out $40 billion uh, in this go-round, okay? I forget how, how many billion, it was billions in the last go-round. If the government, you better get what you can while you can, okay? And if you have a business that has put you in a situation where you can get financing for that business, okay, you, you, you're you not practicing good business sense if you don't take advantage of that. Um, that's really all I have uh, for now. I want to encourage you to take a look at government programs for your business. There are a ton out there. And yes, they're going to want specific pieces of information to determine whether or not you're eligible for whatever program they are offering. But I told this individual that if they offer, if they ever send them another letter or communication talking about they may be eligible for some money, they need to have communication going back the other way to the government immediately. Money is <clears throat> the dollar. The uh, U.S. dollar is fungible. And what I mean by that is if you get $80,000 from the U.S. government and they say, well, you can only spend this money on these certain things for your business. Fine. It frees up money that you would have spent on those, on other things, I mean, I'm sorry, on those things, it frees up money that you would have spent from your coffers so that you can, you know, manage that money in such a way that you just take the government money, put it toward whatever it is they stipulate, and then you take your other money and do other things with it. Maybe purchase assets, okay? I'm just blown away at um, this individual's stance on that issue. All right, so in any event, guys, I uh, will talk to you soon. To learn more about how you can achieve financial independence, check out these videos we recently posted on the Money Changes Everything channel.